Christ is risen. Oh, come on, y'all. Help me celebrate that the tomb is still empty and that our Lord still reigns. Come on, y'all. Stand to your feet and help me usher in the presence of God in this service on today. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's not just clapping our hands. It's also the opening of our mouth. Anybody got a hallelujah left in you this week? Anybody got a thank you, Jesus, left in you this week? I know it's been a tough week for some of you in the room, but you made it. Anybody glad they made it? Anybody glad just to be here today? Through the heartache and pain, through the sunshine and the rain, you made it because of God's help. Come on, let's give God praise just for his help, his sacrifice, his grace, and his mercy, his kindness towards us. I'm going to say it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. That's a command. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, saints. Help me usher in the presence of God in this place. He woke you up this morning. He didn't have to do that. It wasn't because you were so good. It's because he's so good to you. Come on, y'all. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good and he's worthy. He's worthy. Has anybody been healed? Has anybody been set free? Anybody been delivered? Anyone's children been protected? Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Anybody got finances they don't deserve? Anybody got movement of their limbs they don't deserve? If it had not been for him on our side, we wouldn't be here right now. So come on and help me bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 When I think of his goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Anybody else soul cry out? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God today. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm just thinking how much he's blessed me. Amen. Amen. And if you like me, if you could look back over your life and truly think things over, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't have got home safe. You wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be standing on your feet. Come on, I'm taking a moment to give God praise. We're celebrating 31 years, but what are you celebrating? Anybody got a reason to celebrate the Lord himself? Come on and open up your mouth and give God praise. He's been good to us. He's watching over you right now. And whatever you're going through, he will bring you through. Come on and give God praise. Help me bless the Lord. Y'all not helping me bless the Lord. Maybe he ain't done nothing for you. But as for me and my house, we will. We will. We will bless the Lord. Amen. Every now and then you ought to just bless the Lord just because he's good, because of his grace and his mercy. Anybody saved in the house? Where are my redeemed folk? Maybe y'all will help me bless the Lord this morning. Where are my redeemed folk at? Where are those that are blood washed, fire baptized? Where y'all at? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all. We have blessed God just for who he is to us. Let's bless God for 31 years of church, True Vision Church. Come on, we can do better than that. 31 years. I've been here for about 20 of them. It's been a good ride, y'all. Come on, let's give God praise. You give God praise for the time you've been here. Whether it be a day or a month, God has blessed us through this church. Amen. All the stuff we've done in the community, the stuff we've done just as a church body for our ministries throughout the years. God's been blessing this house. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's just our greeting and we usher in the presence of God. Look at your neighbor and greet your neighbor. Say hello to your neighbor. Look at him in the eye. Look him in the eye and say hello to them. Hello on the World Wide Web. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining us today. I'm specifically talking to you. Those of you on Facebook, 
those of you through our, 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 our live stream, through our, our website, those of you through our YouTube channel, thank you for joining us today. We bless God for you, our online audience. We ask you to do us a favor, like this video, share this video, please help us spread the word of God at this place on this online. And then do me this favor, tell me how you're doing. I'm blessed, I'm glad to be here. Type in your I am statement. I'm, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. What is your I am statement today? Type that into the chat box. I'm gonna go in there in a little bit and talk back to you and check on you myself as well. But then don't stop there. This is for everybody. This is for everybody in the house. This is for everybody online. I want you to boast on God. Take a moment, look the other person in the eye, your neighbor, and tell them one thing that the Lord did for you today. Don't look at me. Look at your neighbor and bless your neighbor with your testimony of God's goodness, God's grace, God's mercy. And you type yours in. I can't wait to see your boast on God. He woke me up this morning. That's my boast. He started me on my way. I do not take it lightly that I'm here today that God has blessed me with life. Amen. Can we take a moment and give God praise again? Amen. Ah, come on, let's do better than that. God's good. And all the time. Yeah, yeah, they're my church folk right there. Amen. Amen. In the book of Mark, at chapter 35, is our scripture reading this morning. Book of Mark. chapter 35 it's popping on the screen as well it says this in the New King James rending of the text now in the morning having risen having risen a long while before daylight he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed that's it. That's the scripture today. Amen. Say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Amen. Every now and then, amen. you got to get off by yourself amen. and have a time with the Lord and pray. Give God praise for his word. Amen. Amen. Can we pray together? And y'all, we're doing an invocation prayer. Here's what that means. We are ushering in the presence of God in this place. Will y'all help me do that? So as I'm praying aloud, y'all help me pray God's presence in this house today. Amen? Heavenly Father, most gracious Master, our Alpha and Omega, our beginning, our end, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord God Almighty, we bless your holy name. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due unto you. God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for food on our table. God, thank you for clothing on our back. Thank you for shelter over our head. Thank you for protecting us and keeping us and watching over my children and watching over my spouse. And thank you for healing this body. And thank you for putting finances in the bank. Thank you for my promotion. And thank you for making a way out of no way. God, this list goes on and on. You've been good to me. And so God, as I'm here celebrating you, worshiping you in spirit and in truth, I need you at this party because you are the way maker. You are the great I am. And so God, nothing happens without your hand. So God, come into this place with us today. Let us feel you in the atmosphere. Have your way in this service today. Let the captive be set free. Let someone find deliverance today. Let someone find a resting place and joy with you today. God, thank you for the founding members of this church. Thank you for our founding pastor. Thank you for the blessing he is. God, thank you for every element of this service. We pray it be pleasing in your sight. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. But God, now we thank you more than ever for that gift of salvation. The one we can't tear up. The one we can't mess up. Bless your holy name. We pray all of this in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our soon coming King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Come on and give God praise again. Woo. God is good, y'all. 
We are a church on a mission. If you were here last week or you watched us online, you probably saw Pastor preach our mission statement. What a blessing it was. If you did not catch it, go back and watch it. I, I, I beg you. And we're going to recite our mission statement now. It keeps us focused on what the Lord has asked us to do as a church here at True Vision Church. Let's recite it together. By the power of the Spirit of God, through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel message, we populate heaven while depopulating hell. Teach people to love God, themselves, their neighbors, and equip the saints for the work of ministry, all to the glory of God. Come on and give God praise. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this house today. Keep my mic on. I said, let's bless the Lord in this house today. Hey, in case you don't know it, this is the day the Lord has made. Come on, y'all. Let us rejoice and be glad. Come, TVC, you ought to be excited. You ought to be excited that God, who is a loving God, a gracious and kind and merciful God, is the God that watched over us all night, the God that woke us up to hear the clock this morning. What y'all looking at? Look at God. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor in this house. Yeah. Y'all all right? Y'all good? You got to wake up in here a little bit. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I made it through the eclipse. I got some glasses for sale that I didn't use the other day. I'll give them to you on discount. Amen. Everybody getting all excited about this, that, and the other. I'm excited about Jesus right now. I'm excited about his love. Amen. Y'all say amen to the Howard family who's coming. James and Vanessa and the clan. This army. Amen. And we're going to celebrate with little Vaughn. Am I saying the correct name right? All right. Who was born on September the 19th. 2023, and we're going to dedicate Lil Vaughn today, all right? Now, how many of y'all been here longer than five years, ten years? So y'all know we don't really do baby dedications. We do what? We do parent dedications. Because the baby can only be dedicated if the parents are dedicated. <sighs> Did y'all hear what I just said? We're not christening this child. We're not baptizing this child. We're challenging the parents. There we go. Lift your hands, parents. We're challenging them to recommit themselves in the fear and the nurture of the Lord. Recommit themselves and dedicating themselves to live a holy and righteous life before God that they may then be able to raise Vaughn in that way. Now, you are standing with me because why? We're doing this as a community, right? And so you're, you have a commitment today to continue to pray for it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we got to continue to pray for it. Support these families, parents, amen, and raising children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, right? Deuteronomy chapter number six. Says this. Starting at verse number four. This is what they call the Shema. Everybody say Shema. So you just spoke in tongue. That's a Hebrew word that simply means hear. Good to see you, Brother Howard. It means hear. Listen, O Israel. The Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. These words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Now here's the key. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in the house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and of your gates. Y'all, let me give you all of what God just said through Moses. Do life with your children. 
for the kingdom. Amen. Come on, give him praise. <laughs> Baby dedications are as good as counseling. They don't have any effect unless you walk through with it. I've counseled many people over the years and this, that, or the other, and it only worked if they applied it. So the same thing we challenge you today. Jesus says, listen, suffer the little children to come unto me in the King James Version, and that's always been something when I was younger. Why did he say suffer? You can't parent unless you go through some suffering. And really what it means in our vernacular is tolerate these children. Sometimes we want to push them aside, put them in the back, leave them alone, never really administer or teach or share with them. Hey, you got to tolerate them, he says. And that means, just like we tolerate them, taking them to football practice and basketball practice and track and, come on, y'all y'all know what I'm saying? All that sacrifice and we'll travel to Florida to go see them play basketball and gymnastics and all of that. Hey, we got to tolerate them and suffer them and go through some of the same and even greater things for them to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. I have my oil with me now. We're going to pray and we'll put this certificate. Father and mom, y'all, come on. Y'all center up a little bit, a little bit. Y'all give them some room. Y'all crowding them. Y'all crowding them. They, they, they the ones we were looking at today. Get them in the center. Get them in the center. Vaughn, come on. Get him there. All right. Who all we have? We got godparents? All right, godparents. Do I have to tell you what your role is? All right. You, you know that already. I'm going to say it anyway. You don't look like you know. Oh. <laughs> Other than just be a good friend and support and love to this family, particularly Vaughn, um, it is said that if something were to happen to these parents and no other living relative would be able to raise them, that you would take on the role, but more so, not just take on the role of raising them, raising them in the Lord. Amen? Amen. But we God forbid anything like that happen, because they got, who you got? Parents? Where the parents? Come on, everybody get close. Everybody, come on, get close. Who the grandparents? All right. Got grandparents. Who, who are y'all parents? Are they around? Are they here? That's your mom. Hey, mom. Dad. Oh, yeah. But I said, he said, well, come on. Come on. Yeah, that's all right. All right, we good. We good. And who are all these other good-looking folk up here? Aunts, cousins. Y'all okay. What church y'all go to? I mean, they, they brought a whole army with them today. We can, we can take y'all in today at True Vision right now. It, 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 babe, we got room for you. We got room for you. Let's pray together. Sean, come on up with me, please. Y'all ready to pray? Let's move our hands toward this family today. Father, we bless you and thank you right now for this family. Lord, we know the church is nothing but a group of families. So goes, the, so goes the family, so goes the church. And Lord, one of the key and cornerstones of the family is husband and wife coming together. Lord, as you instructed Adam and Eve, and, and as we have that instruction on us now to be fruitful and multiply, we thank you for these children. Today, Lord, we highlight Lil Vaughn right now. Thank you for his life. We pray for him now, God. We thank you for him, and we know he's come, yes, as a result of the intimacy of husband and wife, but more so, we know you give children. We know you bless the womb, oh God, and we thank you for his life. We pray for his life presently, Lord. We pray for his life in the future, right now, God. We pray for his future teachers, <laughs> schooling, education. We pray for his future friends, we pray for his, his purpose in life. I pray, Lord, that he realizes, Lord, two major days of his life, the day he was born and the day he finds out why. That he'll walk in purpose. He'll walk with intent in that. That he'll, he'll find a place of joy and peace. Lord, I pray for his future wife. <laughs> pray for his future <laughs> children, oh God. We pray generationally in the future as well, God, we, because we give him and put him back in your hands. And that's what it's all about, God. You've given Vaughn to this family, the Howard family, and now they give Vaughn back to you. 
and how they raise him and teach him about you. God, as we pray now, God, we anoint his head with oil as a symbol of your presence and power and touch on his life, God. Protect him and hold him and keep him in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I pray you bring the right people in his life that will help him, that will pray for him, that will support him, Lord. But Lord, I also pray that you repel those who mean him hurt, harm, or danger in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this village that stands here today in support of this family, in support of Vaughn. Pray for these. Thank you for these grandparents. Thank you for these godparents. Thank you for these aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, whoever it may be, God. And Lord, we thank you for the church family that stands in togetherness and unity as well, God, as we support this family in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, church, give the Lord a great amen. We give you this certificate. It says this, we, James and Vanessa, Commit ourselves to the Christian nurture of Vaughn Howard, again born on September 19th, 2023, entering into this commitment as members of the True Vision Church, San Antonio, Texas, under the leadership, Pastor Michael Steve Brown, on this day, the 14th day of April, 2024. I've already signed it, and uh, you can sign it. Let me give this mic away. bring the podium back I think hey y'all this is our 31st church anniversary month amen and we celebrate you can have a seat for a moment okay that's all right it's okay no, 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 don't step watch out watch out watch out watch out we had a little accident on stage we all right somebody give me some paper towels anybody anybody I ain't call no names it's whoever wants to do it and we'll get that covered up and worked out. Y'all good? All right. Let me do a couple of things right now. Here's what I need. I need everybody's attention right back here. Amen. Now let's try that again. Let's celebrate these 31 years. Hey. Satan has weapons of mass destruction, and one of his weapons of mass destruction is a weapon of mass distraction. Tell your neighbor, don't get distracted. Babies throw up sometimes, don't they? All right, anybody that have a baby? Then you know what we're talking about. So let's, let's, let's focus our attention back on what we need to have it today. Amen? And let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord right now. Celebrating these 31 years, we have guests in the house, and I'm going to acknowledge them in just a moment. Um, I, I first want us to know, 31 years ago, God used a man by the name of Pastor Gregory Wilson Jones to seed this church, amen, uh, to start this church, to plant this church. He is home with the Lord. Uh, but I tell our church all the time, listen, y'all, don't, don't forget about foundation. Tell somebody foundation. We know this church is built on Christ, but yet the Lord uses people. Y'all say amen for our founder, our chief, <laughs> Pastor Gregory Wilson Jones. Amen? 
But we also know that he did not do it by himself. There was a group of people. Some of them are with the Lord. I'm going to ask that that, uh, the picture of their names would come up now. And let's praise God in memorial for those. No, wait. Yeah, there we go. For those. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice. 31 years ago for us to be here and do what we're doing even right now. We thank God for the team. Amen. Tell somebody we can't forget. Hey, listen, the house has to pay attention to the foundation because the foundation keeps the house from cracking and crumbling. Amen. Hey, y'all, let's thank God for those founding members that are with us now. Somebody say, with us now. And many of them are sitting on these front two worlds. We praise God for them. And we've got a special tribute for them in word. And then we're going to take a picture. If y'all would just give us your time. We're going, oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh, stop, 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 stop. No, 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 I didn't tell you to, I, I said stop. <laughs> Hold on, stop, 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 stop. Stop. Okay, am I not speaking English? S-T-O means? All right, so I want you to stop because I wanted to show that we don't play that. Women do not come upstairs by themselves. Y'all see that? Man, now, hold on, whoa, 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 there are certain people that should bring people upstairs, but if you don't see anybody, you see a woman getting ready to come up, I expect any brother close in the vicinity to run to that step. Amen. Now, let me tell all you sisters, the rule here is you don't come upstairs by yourself. So if a man ain't there, you just wait at that little step, be pretty. Anybody else hearing me in the house? Chivalry not dead here at TVC. I know this is a new generation and stuff, and you, you, I, women, I know y'all be opening your own doors and all that kind of stuff, but hey, not, not in here. And then plus, we ain't got the insurance to pay for people anyway. Y'all receive our church administrator, Ty Dorsey, as she comes and gives tribute to our founding members. Um, I came to True Vision Church when it was in its toddler stage, um, uh, the terrible twos. Uh, and it, um, I was 18 years old at that time, and I had a baby on my hip and a baby in my belly. So that's why it's such an honor for me to come up here today and give this tribute. Um, I've been there for the highs and the lows, and these founding members literally watch me grow up physically and spiritually. So that's why this is such a blessing for me to be able to do this today. <clears throat> TBC's founding members know, I'm sorry, or you did that part. <laughs> so to be able to celebrate not just 31 years as a church, but to be able to celebrate the brave and bold soldiers that God used to establish this church 31 years ago is such a blessing. Let's praise God for them. Let's praise God. To our founding members, I want to give you this gift and words today to let you know that we love you and we will never forget the blessing you are and have been to this church. Our founding members are visionaries, hence the name True Vision. You had a vision that inspired the establishment of our church community. Like pioneers, you carved a path through uncharted territory. You bravely stepped forward to create something new and meaningful. You laid a foundation of waver unwavering dedication that allows us to continue to build on that same foundation today. With Christ as the cornerstone and perseverance as the mortar, you constructed more than a physical structure. You built a place of refuge, a space for generations to connect with God and each other. Every aspect of this church bears the imprint of your dedication. Your commitment went beyond brick and mortar though. Through selfless acts, the giving of your time, talent, and resources, you nurtured our church family. Amen. Your labor of love is evident in every 
crack and cranny of our church. And like sturdy pillars, you have anchored our church community. Your unwavering faith, leadership has guided us through sunshine and storms. You are the legacy bearers, the ones whose passion and love for God illuminate the path forward for the future, future True Vision Knights. For 31 years, your vision has guided True Vision Church and we stand in awe of your legacy. And today we wanted to take a moment to let you know that we remember you, both those who continue to walk with us and those that have been called home to glory. Founding members, you have inspired us to live our faith with courage, compassion, and joy, therefore, your legacy will live on in the fabric of TVC's church identity. Thank you. God bless.
God praise in this house. Now y'all know y'all just broke the rule I just set in place. Some of these women came off the stage after dancing without any help. We're going to get it together. So from now on, all dancers, before you dance, position men in place to help you come off this stage. Can we do that? Y'all receive our founding members as they come this way. We get ready to take a picture together. No, not on, not on the stage. All out front. Amen. Amen. Sister Jones, you should be sitting right here, standing right here in the middle. Now, come on, y'all got to balance this thing out a little bit. If somebody, I need somebody on my left side. Here we go. Need a few more on the left side. There we go. All right, we're getting it. We're getting it. BK, slide over a little bit to the to the left. Leave sister, just leave a gap there. Hold on, Mother. Joy is coming to do a presentation to Sister Jones. Pastor Jones, come this way. Y'all make room for Pastor Jones somewhere and then next to Mom, Mama Martha. Can y'all do that? All right. I want the microphone. This is my wife, y'all. She's going to... So let me explain what we are doing. Our founding pastor is with the Lord, but his bride is still with us. She's residing still in Starkville, Mississippi. We are happy to have her again with us here this year. Amen. And we're going to continue... Somebody grab this one for me. To honor uh, Pastor Jones, we're going to continue to honor these founders. We may not do it the same way every year, but we should never forget where we've come from and how we got here. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to give this mic to Sister Joy. Can you hand us to a pastor? And she'll do the presentation to Sister Joy. Thank you. Church, the Bible says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who praises the Lord she shall be praised. Amen. Sister Martha Jones stood beside the founding pastor with courage, with patience, and with love. And we honor her today for that. We thank you for your presence today. We thank you that you stood strong to found True Vision with your husband, Pastor Jones. And we offer this as a token of love from Pastor Michael Steve Brown and the True Vision Church family. Photographer, are we good? Do I need to do anything? Just the second row. All right. We, we good over here? Okay. I'm just going to stand up here so they think I'm taller than everybody. Y'all can do better than that. Come on, keep clapping until they get to the seat at least. <laughs> Praise God for him. Founders, we love you. We've got, a, we've got lunch prepared for our founders. Everybody say lunch is prepared for our founders. I got to say that just in case I see some of y'all other Ninevites trying to come back there and eat. It's just for the founders today, all right? Hey, I want to put some things on your mind, and then we're going to move on with the service. Uh, we've got quite a few announcements, but here's what I'm going to do to cut down on those announcements, those opportunities for you to get involved in ministry. I'm going to refer you over and over again to our website. Somebody say, we have a website. And on that website is so much information. I also want to encourage you to email the church at info at truevisionchurch.org if you do not receive and you 
would like to receive the weekly email that we send out at least on Friday, sometimes on Saturdays, you'll get the weekly email uh, so you can be informed of what's going on. I do highlight some things over the pulpit, but here's what I'm going to do today. Everybody say True Vision Church. True Vision Church. Dot org. So I'm going to say something, and then I'm going to say, but you can find out more information by going to. There you go. And keep saying. First of all, let me just say this. We praise God for this Founders Day. Amen. Next week, as we celebrate our church anniversary, will be our Fiesta Sunday. We have Pastor Sodia coming to share, and he'll be preaching in tongue, y'all, in Spanish. His daughter will be interpreting in English. We'll have uh, mariachi singers, all of that will come in to share. We're going to have a good time, amen? The last Sunday of this month, two things happened. We call it All Tithe Sunday. Somebody say All Tithe Sunday. Here's what we do, Law. Here's what we do. Here's what we do, church. We want to encourage you to do what I believe the Bible is teaching us about how God finances the church, not the kingdom, the local church. Amen? And one of the ways he does that, and you'll see it in Old Testament, you'll see it in New Testament, is through the tithe. We have All Tithe Sunday to do what? For those of you who do not tithe, we're going to encourage you to do it at least that Sunday. If you don't do it beyond that, it's on you. At least do it on that Sunday. We are hoping that this will start you in the process of being faithful in your giving. And, or for those of you who do it every now and then, maybe you will start doing it in a, in a more faithful way. Amen? Tell somebody this is better than killing all them chickens. Amen? We don't do chicken dinners and all that to do what God's called us to do. We try to do it the way the Bible has instructed us to do. So that's All Time Sunday on the 28th. But on that same day at the 930 service, we will have the building dedication of our new campus at Lackland. Somebody give God praise in the house. Today is the last day for any business or church who wants to put an ad in the book. So you got to get it in today by midnight. Amen. How y'all doing with your daily devotional readings? How you doing with your daily prayers? I know. Come on. Keep that up. Keep that up. I don't have to tell you this, but you know Bible study is back in session now on Tuesday night, 630 prayer here, 7 o'clock study on the other campus Wednesday night at 7 o'clock uh, is Bible study. We have a veterans ministry that ministers to our veterans. They're going to get together on Thursday, April the 18th. But you can find out more information about this by going to TVC Lackland Women's Ministry is having a live podcast. You can come to the church at 930 at Lackland or be a part of the podcast online and uh, you can find out more information about this how two classes that are coming up at this campus trauma reboot find your purpose in your pain it's a 12-week faith-based course taught by elder tracy barnett starting on uh, tuesday April the 23rd. There is a cost for this class. It's really a cost for the materials for this class. But guess what? You can sign up and pay for this class. Where? There's another class coming. It's called TVC Counterculture Class. Uh, it's, it's, this, this one's about prayer. Prayer works. Led by Elder Corey Mobley. Saturday, uh, excuse me, Sunday, May 5th is the start. It'll be in our Trinity Hall. But of course, you know you can get more information at Ooh, y'all are spoiled, man. TVC Women's Ministry is hosting an annual spring hat and sundress luncheon on Saturday, May 11th, 11 o'clock a.m. at the newly, I think, uh, they did some renovations there or something like that, but the Botanical Gardens. It's going to cost $55 per person, but how do you sign up and how do you pay? Now, let me help some brother out right now. You've been eyeing this girl in church for the last three months. You don't know how to approach it. You're a little scared. Hear what you do, bro. Go to the website. Get her a ticket for the sundress, sun hat, lunch and peace. Amen. And that's how. Now listen, I'm not saying you're going to get her by buying her a ticket. She ain't cheap. She ain't for sale. But I'm saying that might open the door to a conversation. Anybody, women, would y'all appreciate that? Yeah, if a brother gonna come and talk and put his hot breath on you, at least he ought to come with a ticket. Men, husbands, 
who struggle finding that perfect Mother's Day gift every year. You struggling. You, you, you struggling. You sweating already. I just mentioned it. You struggling. Don't go to Walmart and get a vacuum cleaner. Don't do that. Don't get a no possum pan. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, brother, you might want to hook up some other stuff, but here's something you ought to include in your Mother's Day gift. The sun, the spring hat, and sundress luncheon. Amen? Hook your wife up with that. She'll appreciate that. Matter of fact, she'll appreciate it even better if you get her one and her best friend. I'm, I'm trying to help out. Y'all all right? But guess what? You can find out more information about this if you go to... All right, let me go through these last four. Tell somebody TVC High School Scholarships. You can sign up. Hey, hey, parents, it ain't a whole lot of money. But if your child will graduate and get ready to go and further their education, we got some money for them, all right? Amen. You ain't got to write no essay. We're just going to just give it to you because we love you like that. But you got to do what? Where? <laughs> High school graduates, we want to honor you on May the 26th, but we got to know certain things about you, so you got to sign up where? We're getting ready for our prayers in the park. It's going to happen Sunday, June the 2nd. But guess what? We need some people to volunteer. And how can you sign up to volunteer? Come on, give God praise for the announcements today. All right. We have a young man who's going to come and share the word of God with us today to help us celebrate this month as it relates to our 31 years. He's special to us in this sense. He is the son of our founding pastor. Y'all give God praise now. I met him about 27 years ago, 1998, here at uh, True Vision Church. He was in San Antonio. Uh, he was at Lackland Air Force Base. He was training. Uh, he was wrestling with a call to preach. He, he told me the story. I forgot about y'all. Look at that nice looking fine pastor up there, boy. I'm going to get back to that, to my, to that weight one day. <laughs> to my figure one day. If y'all quit bringing me cakes and pies, I'll get there. Here it is, though. He told me the story. I forgot about it. He said he was wrestling with a call to preach. And he talked to his father, our founding pastor. He said, hey, go talk to Pastor Brown. And he said he came and talked to me, and I gave him this advice. And y'all tell me if it sounds like me or not. I told him to run <laughs> and resist as, as long as he could. I, I guess I must have been in a bad state on that day, man. I must have been going through some stuff. I would still give you the same advice today. He's been preaching for 21 years. He's the associate pastor of the Progressive Baptist Church in Mesa, Arizona. A man where the pastor is, Juan Brown, my cousin Juan Brown. I'm joking, he ain't my cousin. But he's here with us to share the word of God. And it is awesome for us in so many ways to see the fruit of the seed that his father and our founding pastor planted years ago come to fruition. Amen. Y'all, let's praise God for Pastor Ray Jones. Let's challenge and charge him. Pastor Jones, preach the word. Pastor Jones, preach the word. Pastor Ray Jones, preach the word. Do not be afraid of our faces. The next voice you will hear after our wonderful praise team will be the voice of God speaking through the person and personality of Pastor Ray Jones. Come on, y'all stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Hold on. Stand on your feet. Everybody stand on your feet. Do like this. Come on, play something, band. Do something. Now do this. Do this. I'm showing y'all how to praise dance. Next time the praise dance team get up here, we don't just sit and watch them praise. We gonna, we gonna praise with them, amen? And I want you standing on your feet right now because we didn't come for a performance. They're not performing for us. They're leading us in praise, amen? So if we gotta be lifting our hands and opening our mouths and putting our hands together and moving our feet a little bit, let's give God praise in this house. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's do it! Praise the Lord, everybody. Just give God a wave offering and just say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for loving me. When I didn't even know how to love myself, you still love me. Amen? All right. Thank you, Father. We worship and adore you right now. We need you more than ever. We're just so thankful. So we want to lift you up in this moment. Millions of words can describe. Come on, praise me. Millions of words. 
words can't describe yes, sir. the feeling I have now inside. It's hard to explain. So.
preaching and teaching, but also 31 years of living, breathing, and walking in the name of Jesus. Lord, this church means so much to so many. Lord, we ask that you would thank, we would, first of all, Lord, we thank you for being faithful to us. Lord, we thank you for prospering us even when we, 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 we didn't even know where things was going to, how it was going to work out or what was going to happen. Lord, you came through every single time. But we know that you, you brought us a long way from a living room to this large place. But Lord, we ask that you would just continue to be the faithful God that you've been from day one. Lord, as, you, as I share your word today, Lord, tie my tongue to truth. And Lord, let, let me not just share the ideas and opinions of my mind. Although they may be brilliant, they are no more brilliant than your word. Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way. Anoint this time and this season and this place right now for this moment. We pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you could turn your pages and position your devices to John chapter 13, verse 3 through 17. John chapter 13, verse 3 through 17. It's a common uh, passage of scripture. Many of you may know this story. I pray that I give you a fresh approach. We want to give honor to God who is the reason why we're here. He's the reason why we worship. We want to honor my, my father, the founding pastor of this wonderful church. I'm proud to say that because he was surely proud of you. Uh, I want you to know he was proud to call this, uh, this place where he planted his greatest seed. Uh, and I'm grateful for him. Grateful for my mother who is here with us today. Uh, we're grateful for all the founding members and charter members of the church. Uh, we're grateful for all of you. And, I, and I'm grateful for this, the legendary and elusive pastor, Michael S. Brown. Amen. 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 Our kids are going to be telling stories about him one day. Amen. All right. All right. All right. And also to this wonderful people of the True Vision Church. God bless you. All right. I won't be before you long, but it will be strong. I wanted to know. I also want to let you know I, my best friend in the entire world lives in San Antonio, Texas. Steve, Steve Hall over there, is over there with his wonderful wife. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. They came to support us today. Amen. We're grateful for them. They're grateful for them. Y'all make sure y'all say hello. Make an impression because they do live here. Amen. All right. Verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. And to wipe them with the towel that was around him, he, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. 
Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was, a, who was to betray him. That's why he said not everyone was clean. When he had washed their feet and put out on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For, I, for I've given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and most of all doers of his most holy word. If I could mark the momentous, this, this momentous moment or, or, or tag this treasure of a text with a title, I would entitle it A Winning Culture. Yeah. A Winning Culture. Yeah. Many of you know, if you're basketball fans, uh, this year was unique. Uh, because I actually was more excited about women's basketball than I was about men's basketball in the NCAA tournament. On April the 7th, Coach Don Staley and the University of Southern of South Carolina uh, women's basketball team won the NCAA National Championship. Oh, I see we got some fans. All right. Now, they defeated a worthy opponent with one of the best players in women's basketball today. Now, South Carolina was undefeated for the entire season. 38 straight wins. Now, I'm not a South Carolina fan. Go Vols. I'm not. But I'm a fan of winning. And any time I see a team that's winning, I want to know how are you winning. What is your secret to winning? Because I, I want to be winning. I don't know about you, but I want to be winning. So if it, what, what is it? It's, this is impressive to me. Now, like I said, I'm not a South Carolina fan, but regardless, this is impressive. This makes me even more impressive that this is their second championship in a row. Yeah. And what also arrested my attention about this team is that they lost all five starters from the year before. So last year's main team wasn't even there. And yet, even with the loss of five starters, they had an even better undefeated season and yet won another championship against a tougher opponent with better players. See, many people give the credit to the coach. God bless her, and she deserves some credit. But let me just tell you, there's something greater going on here. And that this type of winning comes from something that I, that I call a winning culture. Now, what is a winning culture? I'm glad you asked. A winning culture is when everybody, from the bench to the starters, to the stars, to the coach, to, to the water boy, to the, to, to the, the guy who, 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 who sweeps through the floor every practice and every game, it's when Perfect practice, consistent character, dynamic discipline, and accurate accountability are no longer a dream or a goal, but a way of life. They don't have to be convinced. They're already convinced they're winners. In a winning culture, a team is bigger than any star. A team is bigger, bigger than any coach. In a winning culture, a team is not fighting for victory. A team is fighting from victory. In a winning culture, everyone in the team wakes up every morning convinced they are winners. No one has to provoke them. No one has to push them. They, I already know I'm a winner. See, in a winning culture, everyone 
uh, on the team go to bed confident every night, sleep well, knowing that regardless of the difficulties of the day, I'm a winner. Regardless of the sadness of the season, I'm a winner. Regardless of the challenges, the changes in my life, I am a winner. And no one can convince me otherwise. In their heads, they're winning. In their hearts, they're winning. And those winning heads and those winning hearts lead to hands that do the work. In our passage today, Jesus is with his disciples just before he's crucified. And you have to look at that context before you can really fully understand what's happening here. See, on our side of this context, we're looking back at the cross. In this situation, he's looking forward to it. Jesus shows and teaches his disciples the core values of a kingdom-winning culture because they're about to experience something that's going to change them for the rest of their lives. In this passage, Jesus exemplifies and personifies and embodies two kingdom uh, essential values. They're very simple, but I promise you it'll be helpful if you take them into account. Number one is to keep it humble. Number two is to keep it holy. Keep it humble and keep it holy. I want you to look, look, look your neighbor square in the eye, and I want you to gather up the biggest smile that you can. And look at them square in the eye and say, you look better that way, amen. You look better. And tell them to keep it humble and keep it holy. All right, that's where we're going today. Uh, don't take my word for it. Take the word for it. It's right here in the passage. Verse 3, he said, we're talking about keeping it humble. Keep it humble. Verse 3, it says, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper and he laid aside his outer garments taking a towel and tied it around his waist he looked like a servant and then he poured water into a basin a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around them see let me just say something jesus he didn't just he just didn't just do humility he he personified it in every way even looked like a servant by wrapping the, that towel around his waist. Jesus is the perfect example of humility. Amen. Apostle Paul said it best in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 8, where he says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus, who though he was the, in, in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. By taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus is the perfect example of hum humility. See, being humbled in this passage in the original Greek context literally means to be reduced in height. To be made small. Jesus, in the perfect example of humility, although he was God, larger than life, a citizen of heaven, reduced himself to a servant and eventually a sacrifice. See, in our passage, Jesus challenges his disciples both then and forever to keep it humble. See, a, a winning, a kingdom winning culture requires us to reduce ourselves. Oh, somebody missed it. I know. I know that your TBM preacher didn't tell you that. But I'm here to tell you that a kingdom winning culture requires you to reduce yourself. If there's something in this church that's beneath you, then you aren't where you're supposed to be with God. Reducing ourselves to a, a servant, a slave, prepared to meet the smallest needs of others, even at the sacrifice of yourself. Reducing ourselves to a servant or slave, prepared to give our lives so others may live and live more abundantly. Before you go grabbing your basins and towels, now I know you're, you're motivated, you're excited right now. 
This has less to do with the action of washing feet than it has to do with the attitude that he has for washing them. It's not enough to just wash feet and say, I'm the best foot washer there is. You missed the point. You missed the point. I know you're, you might be a good usher, but let me just tell you, if you think you're the best usher there is and everybody's got to learn, you missed the point. It's the attitude of humility. Let me give you an example. Sheldon Yellen is the CEO of Belfour Holdings Incorporated. Every year, every year, he handwrites birthday and holiday cards to each of his employees. Some of y'all think that's a good boss, right? He has 9,200 employees. He started this practice as a way to build rapport with his employees and has become a tradition that endures him with the people of his company. It's a simple act of humility that goes a long way with people around him. See, he, didn't, he doesn't do this because he has to. He does this because he wants to. Because he wants to connect with the people that he serves with. See, Jesus didn't, Jesus washed his disciples' feet not simply because they were dirty, which they most likely were. They, didn't, they weren't wearing Air Force Ones and socks back then. They wore sandals and they was in the desert. It was, they was probably, ooh. He didn't wash them simply because they were dirty, but to show them that he, would, he found joy in serving. See, with Jesus, this was not an act. With Jesus, this was his attitude. With Jesus, this was not necessarily a pain to do. This was a privilege to do. With Jesus, this was not necessarily a task to, to mark off his to-do list, but it was a talent in which he was given the gift to do. This was a labor of love for Jesus. And true vision if you've, we've, if you've made it this far, 31 years with humility, for God to take you to the next level of where he has for you to go in the next 31 years, you've got to keep it humble. Be willing to serve your brother and sister, even at the cost of yourself, knowing that the only, the only gain I can have in this life is, through, is, is from Jesus. After you keep it humble, I got one more thing I want to drop on you that I'm going to let you go, and then you can go and enjoy fellowship with somebody. And I want to encourage you. Call a lost person, then tell them you love them. One more thing. Number two, keep it holy. We look at verse 6 through 17. It says, he came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, do you wash my feet? My dirty feet? I stink your feet? And Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. That's the story of my life. What I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, you should never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Tom and Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. I like Peter. I like Peter. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. But it's completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew that who was to betray him. And that is why he said, not all of you are clean. Verse 12 says, when he had washed their feet, he put on his outer garment and resumed his place. He said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than the master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. See, Jesus is not only the perfect example of humility, but he's also the perfect example of holiness. Amen. Amen. 
See, the purpose of this perfect pedicure from the Prince of Peace was not necessarily to clean feet, but to ensure that his disciples had clean hearts and clean hands. See, the conversation with, with, with Peter here sparks off an object lesson that the, the, this lesson is on holiness. See, if, if you realize that, that, that every time you do a humble thing, and you, it, it will open up a door for conversation. When you're, you're acting in humility, then you open up a door for conversation. Now, I want you to think about it. He's talking about holiness here. Now, I'm going to tell you, some, for some people, holiness is a scary thought. It's one of those distant, far-off ideas that, that we, we talk about, but but it's not it's really not that compl complicated because he, he kind of gives us the idea here. It, it, you know, it's complex, but it's, you know, listen to it. Do you ever set aside time for a specific purpose? Yeah. If you're a parent like me, you might tell your, your, your kid, as I tell my daughter this all the time, I just, I just need one hour when I get home. Don't ask me nothing. As long as everybody breathing. I mean, just give me one hour. After that, I'm jump back in it. I'm, we we gonna be good, but just give me one hour. Or maybe you have a specific time of the year that you take time off and go on a vacation or spend some personal time or, or, or enjoy something that you like to do. Or maybe you just have some, some special plates that you use for Christmas or holidays something that your grandma gave you or some silverware or something. So when we, when we hear the words like holiness and sanctification, we might think of, uh, of saintly people who never fail or don't do anything wrong. But that's not what it means. When, he, when he's talking about being holy and when the scripture encourages us to be holy, it, it, it literally means to, to sanctify means to make holy or be made holy. Holiness refers to a separation, moving further from the world and closer to Jesus. Further from the world, closer to Jesus. In the Old Testament, Israel was called a holy people because he was moving them further from everybody else and closer to him. In the New, in the New Testament, Christians, uh, it's is, is based upon the faith that, that the Christian would set their life aside for God's purpose. See God, see, see, God doesn't want, God doesn't just want your Sunday mornings. He wants your life. And he wants you to give it to him so that he can change your life and, and be the very core of who you are. God wants our lives to reflect Jesus so that we can look more like him every single day. God wants to use our lives for his purpose as a light in this dark world. See, this is the sanctification. This is the idea of being made holy in Jesus. See, this is how he makes us holy. See, God is, con is, is, is concerned not only with your status in regards to salvation, but also with your state in regards to you living the abundant life in which he's given you. And you can only do this if you follow him. See, holiness sounds scary to some people, but it doesn't need to sound scary. But to the average American, it sounds scary. Our tendency is to say that, that, that holiness is something that is for the isolated halls of a monastery somewhere with a whole bunch of monks. Holiness appears to need, it needs organ music. Holiness appears to need long prayers. Holiness appears to need incense and religious sound and chants. It, it, some, for some people, they don't even think it's even relevant for today. It's almost as though holiness is a, a private way of life for a special group of monks, missionaries, and martyrs. But nothing could be further from the truth. Look at the passage. Look at the passage. Initially, Peter does not want Jesus to wash his feet. Some of y'all understand. If Jesus came in here now and without any warning and asked to wash some of y'all feet, oh, hold on a second, let me go to the bathroom real quick. Peter couldn't handle seeing his mentor and master reduced to the work of a servant or a slave. See, that's like asking Michael Jordan to be a gym custodian. 
That's like asking Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to check your homework. That's like asking Gordon Ramsay to make you a bologna sandwich. That's, it didn't make sense to him. And this led to a teachable moment. Uh, you're not going to wash my dirty feet, my stinky feet. You're not going to wash my feet. This led to a teachable moment. See, here's the thing, acts of humility. See, 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 everybody always praying, Lord, use me, Lord, use me. But when it's time to serve, man, I'm busy. <laughs> Lord, use me, Lord, use me. And when the pastor gets up here, I need some people to work the parking lot. But here's what I'm going to tell you. This is how the Lord uses you. He will put you in a position where you're serving someone and then a conversation happens and you can teach them about what it means to follow Jesus. So Jesus washes all the disciples' feet, all their dirty, stinky feet. The impulsive Peter, John the beloved, Luke the physician and historian, and even Judas. Judas, who is at the same moment already has a plan in place to betray Jesus for what equal to a couple of hundred bucks. See, many of us, we, don't, we, we wouldn't mind washing Peter's feet. We wouldn't mind washing John's feet. Why not? I mean, he, even Thomas, man, why not? Hey, he's a disciple too. But Judas... I like verse 7. It says, what I am doing, you do not understand now. But afterwards, you will understand. See, in that moment, he was no longer referring to humility. They got that part of the lesson when they got their feet washed. Jesus was talking about holiness. See, let me just, let me, let's break it down. Peter was about to deny Christ, cut someone's ear off, and cuss a whole bunch of folks out. Sometimes I feel like Peter. And then Judas was about to betray Jesus with a kiss and give him up for what we equated to a couple hundred bucks. Now they both got their feet washed. They both were showed and taught the road to humility and to holiness. What's so what's the difference, right? Well, let me tell you. Peter went on to preach a message at Pentecost that led to 3,000 people following Jesus. Judas hung himself. What's the difference? What's the difference? Let me tell you. When Peter fell, he came back. He repented. He refocused. He reengaged. When Judas fell, he lost focus. He was blinded by guilt and shame. And Judas let Satan condemn him, to leading him to a very dark place. See, a lot of us, we give Judas a hard time. But every day you wake up. Every day you wake up. And you got the same choices that Peter and Judas had. Are you going to refocus, repent, and get reengaged? Are you going to give up? See, in a winning culture, a kingdom winning culture, you realize that holiness is not giving up. It's getting up after you've fallen. It, it's getting up when people push you back. It's getting up when you're betrayed. It's getting up when you've made mistakes. A kingdom winning culture is, 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 is about humility, but it's also about holiness. The best way to define holiness is living a life fully dedicated to God. It's not just going to church. It's not just listening to worship music. It's not just quoting scripture. It's not just wearing a cross on your necklace when it's convenient. It's loving, it's loving those difficult to love. It's, it's forgiving those who are, who, you, who are unforgivable. It's washing Judas' feet. Let me, the best way to explain this, uh, I know we got some parents in the house, and I, and I know you bought gifts for your kids uh, on Christmas, 
And there's nothing more upsetting when you buy a gift for your kid on Christmas and you didn't look at the fine print on the box and it said, and you missed these words. These words will destroy a kid's Christmas. Batteries not included. You gave him a toy, but you didn't give him the power to work the toy. And, and now everything's closed and they got to wait looking at you in a sad face. You know what that means? It means that you get the toy, but the power to make it work is not included. I got good news for you today. That the kind of, that's not the kind of gift that God gives. God's gift of holiness includes the power of the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the power to make it work. This isn't dependent upon your ability. This isn't dependent upon your perfection. This isn't dependent even on your own righteousness. This is dependent upon the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that rests in his church both now and forever. It ain't going nowhere. This is his church, not yours. True vision, you, you made it this far with humility and, 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 you've made, and you get, you're going to get to the next place with, with keeping it humble, but you've also made it this far with holiness and you're going to get to the next place keeping it holy. And I, I'm here to tell you that you got to keep it humble. You got to keep it holy. And I'm going to drop this on you and I'm going to let you go. I promise I'm done this time. A kindergarten teacher was walking around her classroom while her students drew pictures. And one little girl, she was scribbling so intently. Man, she was excited. Just, you know, she's just going at it. And, and, the, t and uh, the teacher was confused. Uh, and and it, she asked her, what are you drawing? What are you drawing, little girl? The little girl looked at her and said, I'm drawing a picture of Jesus. Uh, and the, the teacher said, baby, let me give you... I hate to tell you this, but I mean, nobody really knows for sure what Jesus looked like. And the little girl, without missing a beat, just drawing her picture, she didn't even look at the teacher. She just, and she looks at her, she said, they will in a minute. <laughs> As I go to my seat, I want to draw a picture of Jesus. Somebody said, I don't know what Jesus looks like. Well, you will in a minute. Because he personifies humility and he expects his disciples to do the same. He, he embodies holiness and he expects his disciples to do the same. And he gives you the power to do it. So, so keep worshiping, church. You don't have to be perfect because Jesus is the cure for your calamity. Keep serving, church. Your Jesus is the balm for your bruises. So keep leaning on one another in love and faith. Jesus is the joy for your journey. So keep loving on one another because he's the forgiveness of your faults. So keep cheerfully giving and sacrificially giving because he is the salvation for your sinfulness. He promised us power, he promised us purpose, he promised us presence, and he promised that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. See, Jesus lived perfectly, died horrifically, rose victoriously, and he sits comfortably at the right hand of God, preparing a place for us even now. He's preparing a place for you and for me. If you don't know what Jesus looks like, you will in a minute. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. The, the kingdom culture is a winning culture. Keep it humble. Keep it holy. And I promise you, he won't let you down. Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this house today. Come on, let's. No, I said let's bless the Lord in this house today. Look at your day, but you're going to know in a minute what he looks like. He looks like a savior to me. He looks like a redeemer. He looks like a healer. He looks like a doctor. He looks like a loving and nurturing mother. He looks like a courageous father. How many even know that God, Jesus, will look like what you need?
Amen. But he wants to have that look through you and I. As our preacher challenges us today to keep it humble. Keep it holy. Watch God do some great things. Let's praise God for his word today. I said, let's praise God for his word today. Come on, it's precious. You acting like you got 15 cents today. Come on. We're overflowing with the challenge of the word of God that will help us live a life pleasing unto him that will bring the fruit of righteousness in our lives. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the servant that you sent to share the word in this house today. We are going to be the better for it. Our hearing it more so our heeding it. Help us, Lord, to walk in the act, yes, of being a servant, but more than that, help us walk in the attitude of being a servant. Jesus, our servant, humbled himself even unto death, even the death of the cross. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus also be in all of us. Pray, Lord, that our preaching and teaching today and this worship is not just for entertainment, not for performance, Even not just to comfort us, but to challenge us and charge us and convict us and convert us that we might be more like Jesus. I pray, Lord, as we share in our prayer of confession in just a moment that somebody sincerely will confess from their lips that you are Lord in Christ. If they have not done so already and believe in their hearts the gospel story, the good news that Jesus lived, died, and defeated death and hell, took the sting from death and the victory from the grave and rose on that third day seated in the seat of authority and the right hand side of the Father making preparation to come back may we be ready in Jesus name we pray amen listen church we share a prayer of confession just like your favorite team sometimes in winning the game goes into overtime we're a little over time but thank you for Hey, sitting through the game. That's how we win it sometimes in overtime. Amen. We, we share a prayer confession. Those of you who are at home or in this room, it, it is about accepting the Lord Christ. All of our sermons, all of our teaching, everything we do should point to him. Even when there's a little light on us, as I have a little, I have like 20 lights on me right now. Listen, here's what I should do. Take that light and shine it back on Christ. Amen. TVC, we're here 31 years because of Jesus. And we'll continue only because of his grace, mercy, love. And so we want to share in our prayer of confession. Here it is, a prayer of the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you shall confess with your mouth, somebody say confess. I want to just tell you, confess simply means this, more than just lip service, it's life service. Confession also simply means to agree with. Somebody say to agree with. That's what it means biblically. So Jesus is Lord, but your confession is you agreeing with what Scripture already said, that he's Lord, he's Savior, and all of that. Amen? Amen. We have this prayer. Listen, it is words on a paper, but it can be more than that if it becomes your prayer, if it becomes your words to the Lord. We're just helping you to articulate to the Lord in prayer because the Bible also says, whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? So this prayer goes, listen, we want to know if this is your first time sharing it, if, if this is your prayer to God, and you're asking him to save you. We want to know about it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's between you and God first, but it's also should be shared with us. Why? Because once you accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you become a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. You become a part of the family of God. And don't you want to know who your brothers and sisters are? Amen. And so share it with us. We'd like to know about it. And then we want to walk with you next steps, if you will, as you walk in your discipleship journey with the Lord. Prayer is going on the screen, and if you make that confession at home or here, here there are connection cards in the seats. There's a receptacle in the uh, connection center, the welcome center. You can just put it in that box, and we'll get back with you, fill it out. If you're at home, email us, call us, and let us know about your confession to the Lord. We want to connect with you. Y'all ready? If you're already saved, listen, y'all, let's, let's say this because we're, we're already there, but it's still the word of God or based on the word of God, and it doesn't want to unsave you. It's really just your testimony and witness even to others. So let's say it loud and proud. Let's pray this prayer together. Y'all ready? Let's do it. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. 
I ask for your forgiveness. I confess, I agree that you are the Lord. You are the Christ. You are the Savior. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. I repent of my sins. I invite you to take charge of my life. Be the Lord over my life. I want to trust and follow you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bless his name today and praise him. Even for those of you making the decision, hey, we know this. God does the saving every day. He does the saving every day. And we praise God for you. We welcome you into the kingdom of God today. Listen, y'all, we're going to share in our giving. This one little thing, uh, Booth, if you got it, I want to celebrate in this house that we tried to celebrate the other day, but we, we missed it. We didn't get a chance to celebrate it. Uh, 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 Lieutenant Colonel Titus Butler, where are you, sir? Wave a hand. You tried to get away. He's over there. You tried to get away. Y'all, let's celebrate his retirement after 20 years in service. I shared at the happy to be there at your retirement celebration for you and your family. So, man, God bless you. Thank you for your service. Hey, y'all, we're getting ready to share in our giving. And uh, if you have something to give today, praise God. If you've already given, praise God. If you're going to give, praise God. If you have something in your hand to give now, there's, a, again, a receptacle. When we say amen, you can put it in there. If you've already done it through one of the electronic ways to do it, give the fire, cash up, or through your bank, whatever it may be. Here's what we want to do, Lord, though. We still want to thank God for the gifts and ask him to bless the gifts. Amen? So if, even if you don't have anything in your hand, maybe just hold up your hand in a form of giving. Father, we bless your name. These gifts we give unto you today. We give them, Lord, in this way, first of all, because you told us to give, so we're obedient. And then, Lord, we give them on purpose. We give them intentional. You said, Lord, as we have purposed in our heart, yet the teaching is as a farmer sowing seed. So as we sow the seed of these gifts today, we also give with expectation, only because you said we could. You said you would open windows of heaven, pour out a blessing. We know farmer, when he sows a seed, he always looks for growth and fruit to come back. So we give with expectation. We give with the attitude of gratitude, not sadly or madly, not out of necessity, not grudgingly, but we give hilariously, happily. We give cheerfully with the right attitude. Take these gifts, bless, break, multiply them for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Now here's what I want everybody to do, to hold, still, and freeze. Because I accept the founders. I want to lead them out, and I don't want them to get caught up in the crowd. So come on, come on, lead them out now. We've got some cornbread on the other side. Or maybe some fish and chips. I don't know what Jesus is going to provide today. Y'all say amen again for our founders. Those of you who don't need assistance, go ahead and walk. Lead them out, lead them out. Calvin, come behind with the rear, okay? Oh, what can I sing today? As a, as a, what were you playing earlier? We have come into this house. I know we're getting ready to leave. Gathered in his name to worship him. Y'all remember that song? We have come into this house. We have gathered in his name to worship him. To worship him one more time we have I gotta take y'all back to church huh gathered in his name to worship Christ our Lord oh worship him Christ Everyone standing, your hands lifted, head lifted toward heaven. The Bible says we look unto the hills, but our blessings don't come from the hills. They come from the Lord. But that's the posture. Let's look up to the Lord. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. 
the Lord be gracious unto you lift his countenance upon you may the Lord give you his peace receive this in Jesus name amen amen receive it in praise today God bless you go in peace to worship Christ to worship Christ